Hi, this is Kevin Westerling, editor of Water Online, reporting live from WEF Tech 2012. I'm here with Tom McCurdy, who's the re regional manager for water and wastewater with AirZen. And Tom, I see here you got the AirZen Turbo. Can you tell me why choosing the right blower technology is important? Well, the reason why choosing the blower, right blower technology is important be is because there are a number of different system types out there. And depending on the characteristic of that system in terms of uh, in terms of the flow fluctuations and the pressure fluctuations, um, it, it really helps to determine what the most appropriate technology would be in a given application. Well, Tom, I understand it's vitally important to have the most efficient technology. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, it, it absolutely is. I mean, with having uh, a number of different technologies available, uh, it, it absolutely is important to have the, uh, the most efficient technology, but that doesn't tell the whole tale. Uh, if you put in a more efficient technology and if it's, it's not properly uh, uh, fitting in with the type of system that you're dealing with, you could run into a number of different operational troubles. For example, this turbo here, it's a great machine, it's very efficient. And there are a number of different turbo machines that are out on the market right now. But when they first came into existence, uh, they were the only other game in town compared to a, a, a standard PD blower. People looked at efficiency first, and in many, many cases, they were over-applied and maybe even installed in systems where a turbo really didn't match up with what the system actually needed. And then they started to get into trouble. There was a definite learning curve with that. And the whole idea here is for, uh, for the engineer or the uh, person that's trying to decide what the most appropriate technology is to kind of head them off or give them a, a good direction and start with the system first even though it, it may not necessarily be the most efficient, it'll certainly be more efficient in the long run and more trouble free. And what if I just want a turbo? A lot of people just want a turbo. I mean, those, those are the same people that stand in line overnight when the next version of the iPhone's coming out, you know, the early adopters. And it's, I can understand that because there is a certain pool factor to the turbo. It's a great machine operating at 20, 30,000 RPM and very efficient, small footprint. There's a lot of attraction there. But again, as I said before, a lot of them are over applied. And it may be that a turbo is the most appropriate uh, technology for a given application but you really have to take a step back and look at how it's being used before you pick that, you know, before you pick that technology. What other factors enter into the evaluation besides efficiency? Well, you have to look at, again, looking back at the system, there are different processes and there are a number of processes all over this uh, convention floor that would give me a good example. An SBR system where uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, level could vary. Well, that level also translates to discharge pressure for the air supply. And if you're dealing with any of the PD technologies, which are basically a constant flow against the varying pressure, you're okay as long as you have enough motor horsepower to overcome that higher pressure. Whereas if you're dealing with the turbo technology, you have to make sure that that high pressure and that low pressure both reside on the characteristic curve for that particular machine, otherwise you're getting in trouble. That's one example. Another example might be flow. You know, any turbo machine runs at its most efficient in its sweet spot, where it's designed for. But when you start to slow that machine down based on what the system requires, you're limited on turndown with any turbo machine to about 50% of that design point. Whereas with the PD machines, you might have a 4 to 1 turndown. So if something's rated for 1,000 CFM, you could get it all the way down to 250. Well, if a system demands flow fluctuations like that and pressure fluctuations, that guides the engineer in terms of picking out the right technology. Here's an important question for you, Tom. What about costs? How do you compare them? Well, it really comes down to uh, how the life cycle costs are going to be evaluated. For some blowers, for example, our standard PD blower, um, that would usually carry the lowest capital cost, but by comparison to the other technologies that we have, it's less efficient. Well, it really depends on the duty cycle. For example, if a blower is being used for an air scour application where it's uh, assisting the backwash and cleaning up the media and filter, it might only be operating for maybe a half an hour a day. So the electrical cost, the life cycle cost, is more, uh, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's more of a capital uh, uh, decision than a life cycle cost decision. 
because the electrical costs are really a small amount of it. So that's got to determine you know, which, which technology that you use. So you've got capital, and then you've got uh, electrical usage, and then you've got footprint, uh, the available uh, area for the machine. In many cases, uh, we would be uh, replacing older technologies, and the amount of available space in a given room becomes an important factor. That's where the beauty of a turbo comes in, because you get a lot of flow in a very small footprint. So it's those type of things that you have to consider beyond just the efficiency when you're selecting a proper blower. Tom, are there any situations where more than one technology is appropriate? Good question. There are instances where a mixture of technologies might be appropriate. For example, if you know that you're going to be carrying a base load, a base demand for air, and you want to run uh, your uh, one machine uh, as a base load unit in its, in its uh, uh, efficiency sweet spot, a turbo may be the way to go. Uh, but if you know that you're going to have fluctuations in that flow, then you might want to use a turbo for your base load and use something that has a, quite a bit more turndown, such as our, our screw compressor, uh, to carry the swings, to carry the, the fluctuations in that load. You really have to look at what those system needs are to determine whether a mixture of those technologies would be appropriate. It's not always the case to mix old with new, though, because if you're putting in a turbo in a system where you had two low blowers, two low PD blowers, which by their design have a lot of pulsations, you don't want the pulsations from those old PD blowers to impede the, um, uh, impede the operation of these, uh, of these turbo blowers. So it has to be done very carefully but it can be done and you can end up saving a whole lot more money than just maybe going with one technology. Tom, a lot of great information you just gave us. How do you make sense of it all? Well, what Airzen has done is come up with an engineer's mini guide for proper blower selection. As I said before, you start with the system and what it requires. It's a flow chart that basically takes you through all the steps of whether you're going to be doing a life cycle evaluation or not, and some of the system characteristics that you would have to uh, encounter to help you determine the proper blower technology. And once you've done that, this will help you size the appropriate uh, uh, individual blowers and then do a representative energy evaluation. Now this is critical because most blower systems have to be designed for what I call the perfect storm, which is the, the highest flow, the, the highest strength of wastewater. This is mandated by the regulator, so the engineer has to design around that. However, the amount of time that actually, that, that actually is needed is pretty minimal. So you really have to look at other characteristics, other uh, running points in order to do an appropriate evaluation, do a weighted average of those power consumption numbers to ultimately determine what your, uh, what your operating costs are going to be. So this gives you sort of a, you know, a quickie guide. Of course, you know, there's more detail that's missing, but you can always get a hold of uh, any, any heirs and representative in order to uh, get more detail on, on your particular project. Thanks, Tom. Really appreciate your time. Thank you.